This is Brita, the Questioning Quilter, and this is my third video in my series on disappearing quilts. Now this quilt is a variation of a disappearing pinwheel that I call Top of the Stairs. Now before I get started, I want to tell you to hang around to the very end because after I get done showing you how to make this, I've got two other layouts that I want to show you that are made with the same block that this is made from. Now, I said this is a disappearing pinwheel, so of course it starts with a pinwheel block. Now to make this block, we're going to start off with four half square triangles, which we're going to turn into a pinwheel block. Now when I'm making a pinwheel block, I always end up having to think about which way do I turn these. Oh, there we go. Now these can oftentimes get confused, but there's radial symmetry. So if we take these top two blocks, flip them around, you'll see that they're both exactly the same. I call it making kind of a tent, dark on the left, light on the right. So then you can just take all of your half square triangles, stack them up, dark on the left, light on the right, sew them together. And then when they're all sewn together, they're gonna to look like this. You can now take half of your sewn blocks, rotate them to the top, and you get a pinwheel. Now, just a real quick aside, if you take this same set of blocks and you turn them around to the bottom, you'll get an hourglass. And if you leave them all with the same orientation, you end up with these flying geese. Now, when you sew those pieces together, you'll end up with a pinwheel that will measure nine inches by nine inches. Now, we're going to cut this into nine even three by three squares. So to do that, we're going to cut one and a half inches from the center. Now, we're going to be making a lot of cuts. So I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you put a piece of tape on your ruler so that the cuts will be consistent. Now we're going to turn the ruler, make a second cut across the top. Again, one and a half inches from the center. Now notice when we make this cut, that piece is a half square triangle. Now we're going to turn the mat 180 degrees and make two more cuts. Again, make sure that it's lined up with the tape, one and a half inches. We're going to cut. And notice again, we're going to have the point of the half square triangle. If it doesn't make a half square triangle, if there's some white showing, then you need to double check your measurements because we're going to cut this by one third. So if it's a little bit more than nine inches or a little bit less, you may have to adjust your measurements. Now, once this is done, you'll see that we have four half square triangles. We're going to have four of these bar blocks and one pinwheel block. Now we're going to put the pinwheel in the upper left corner. I'm going to take these bar blocks and form kind of a longer bar, line them up so there's a bar across the top of the block. We're going to take the other two half square triangles and make kind of a line going down the left hand side. So you see how it almost looks like half of a frame. I'm going to put one half square triangle with the light to the top. Now the rest of the half square triangles are arranged so the dark is to the top. The first three make kind of an ingot shaped piece and the last half square triangle with the dark up looks kind of like the tail of a fish that's swimming towards the pinwheel. So now we have 36 of these blocks made and I'm going to show you how to arrange it into the top of the stairs quilt. But don't forget to hang around because at the end I'm going to show you two more layouts that you can make with these same blocks. Now, we're going to start this. It's very simple to start. We're going to take these pieces, take these four blocks, and turn them into a bigger block. And to do that, we're going to take this white triangle that's in the corner and we're going to arrange all of those so that that white triangle is to the center. And when we do that, we end up with what I call a tile. Now, to make this tile look like it's floating above the other tiles, 
we're going to take three of these blocks and it's going to make three quarters of a tile, as it were. Again, these white triangles are by this pinwheel. So we're going to do the same thing at the bottom. The white triangle is by the pinwheel. And we put three of them together. Now when you do this, you can begin to see how this is going to look. I'm going to add a third one here. Put this. Now, not everybody thought this looked like stairs. I got help from one of the guilds that I had a lecture at, suggested this. But if you think that it looks like something other than stairs, or stacked tiles, just leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think that this quilt should be named. At this point, some people thought that this looked kind of like a flower. Now, to do the next row out, so this is what I call two rounds. The first round was this, this was the second round. Now for the third round, we're going to do it just like, start off just like the second round. This white corner is towards the pinwheel. Put the second one here. And then this one here. Now, if you like this quilt, but you decide that you wanted to make it a little bit bigger, well, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. The first way is to just make these blocks bigger. And it just so happens that on my website, I have a chart. It's at questioningquilter.com slash chart, which will give you uh, information on what size half square triangle will end up with what size finished block. So for example, if instead of starting with four and three quarter inch, half square triangles. If we started off with five and a half inch half square triangles, we would end up with nine inch finished blocks and this exact same quilt would be 54 by 54 instead of 45 by 45. Now we have the four corners done and you'll notice that we've got these spaces here. And for those, we put basically making half tiles. So again, we're using this white corner as a center. And so we're putting two of them like this. So it's a half a tile. Now, the other way that you could make this a bigger quilt would be if you decided to make another row around the outside. So if you made this eight by eight, had another row of tiles, then you'd have um, eight by eight would be, you need 64 of these blocks and the quilt, excuse my black back, would then be 60 inches by 60 inches. So here it is put uh, together and now when we sew it, it looks like this. Pretty nice, right? Now before I show you the other layouts, I need to ask a favor. In order for me to keep making these videos, I really, really need your help. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell, leave a comment, share this with your friends, your family, post it on Facebook, share it on social media. I need to let everybody know that I'm here making these videos. And as an added bonus, if you want a free printed copy of this pattern, go to my website, sign up for my newsletter. It's also free because all my newsletter subscribers have access to the newsletter archive, which is full of patterns. And this pattern is in the July 2021 issue. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you two more layouts. The first one is kind of similar to this, but the second one is totally different. And it's amazing that it's made out of these same blocks. Now this layout is very similar to the first one in that we're gonna take four of these blocks 
and put them together to form a tile. And we're just lining them up, putting four pieces with this white triangle towards the center. Four pieces go together to make a motif or a tile, whatever you want to call it. But instead of then going around in a circle and making them look like they're stacked, we're simply going to put these in a row, multiple tiles, for a slightly different layout. It accentuates the tiles a little bit more. And when you get all four of them put together, it looks like this. And even though it's not sewn together, you can really get a feel for what it's going to look like when it's done. And the things that I like best is you can see the tiles completely, but the best part is I love these little sets of four pinwheels that are in the corners of the blocks. Now I have one more layout to show you. Now the next layout may be a little bit of a surprise because it starts out exactly like the other two. Put the first two pieces here with these white corners going to the center, but here's where it changes. The next two blocks, the white corner is going to the upper left. And then the last one, the white corner goes to the upper right. And notice you have a dark rectangle in the middle and these two pinwheels. And to me, this block looks kind of like a weeping willow tree. So we're just going to put these together as kind of like an orchard of weeping willow trees. Just one after the other, very simple. And when it's all together, it looks like this. Now you can see how this is a totally different looking quilt. I love how these willow trees end up looking like waves when they're all put together. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope that you liked it. Now, as I said, like, subscribe. If you sign up for my newsletter, you'll get a free pattern in every issue and you'll get notification when the next video comes out. And I'm thinking it's going to be an unusual variation of a disappearing four patch. Stay well and happy quilting.